let's start by talking about a layered workflow and how that kind of a workflow really lends itself well to working with texturing military vehicles, how it can add a lot of flexibility. So let's uh, start by just taking a look at the project files. So you're going to have two project files, this APC texture start and APC texture done. This will have all of the textures and uh, already and you can if you want to just go in and reference that and take a look at it uh, you can do that at any time and we also have this APC texture start which will kind of start from scratch to kind of build things up we're not going to be going step by step but this will be kind of our two options here uh, for you to actually open up also uh, I'll include an images folder now those images should come in with your project but i will have those separately here for you to use uh, at your discretion so Go ahead and start up with this APC, te APC texture start. And these are both Mari archives. So if we jump into our projects tab and you can just open up the archive here, you can see I've already got the texture start opened up. Um, you can see it's one piece of geometry here. Uh, and we, I've also gone in and just uh, calculated the ambient occlusion. So if you want to do that, you can. Let's take a look at the UVs. So it's made up of 28 patches in here and if you want to just take a look at what is included with each one of those patches and how that's laid out you can just go and click through here and you can kind of get a better idea of where these things are located okay some of these are overlapping for instance the tread is one patch for all the tires and then the wheel this sort of hubless wheel is uh, one patch as well some of these other uh, parts of the guns and so forth are also so when we think about texturing our uh, vehicles, especially our military vehicles, are going to have a lot of damage and scratches and things. So we think about this, it's going to be made of a kind of base metal layer and then some sort of a paint or powder coat or some kind of a surface coating on top of that. And then some of that coating is probably going to be scratched away by, you know, bullet ricochets and, and, and impacts and scratches or it's... Uh, you know, we've got a ram up here in front, so it's probably got a lot of scratches going on here where that surface detail scratched away, and you can see the metal underneath. Now, we could paint the texture, you know, just paint the surface color and then start to paint the scratches on top of it, but we can also actually build this much as the actual surface uh, detail would be laid out. So we could have two layers and then have a layer uh, that's going to actually enable us to scratch away parts of the other layer. And that'll give us a lot of flexibility as we work. So let's just real quickly see what that sort of looks like. So to set this up, we're going to need three different channels. So let's go into channels. Right now we have a base color. And so let's go ahead and make this base color and give it some actual color. So we'll go to colors, foreground, and I'm going to just choose this sort of a desaturated green color. You can choose whatever color you like, but I'm going to go ahead and select that color. I'm actually going to go into shelf, and I just want to drag it up here to the menu shelf so I can keep that color. All right, so now uh, I just want to go ahead and select the different patches. So I'm just going to select all the patches and then deselect anything that I know I don't want to have that base color. So the tread, let's say, let's say the windows. I want to make sure that I select the other door on the other side. Okay, so with all of those selected, I'll go to patches, fill foreground. And so now we've got our base color here. So now we need a metal layer, and then we need a mask to be able to uh, scratch away areas of this base color. So we'll go ahead and create a new layer. Let's choose to call this metal. And for this one, I'm going to make it fairly small. And let's give it kind of a, a lighter gray. Let's say OK. So there's our metal. You can see it changes as we click on it. It shows whatever channel we happen to be clicked on at the moment. Let's create a new, uh, a new channel here. And this one we'll call Scratch Mask, and this one will make fairly large, maybe 4K. And this one I'm going to actually change the color to white. And let's go ahead and say OK to that. So now we've got three different channels here. So to be able to see what's going on with these channels and have them interact in a specific way, we need to modify the shader. So we'll go into Shaders, and instead of modifying the default you see we can't really add any new shader modules to this. We need to create a new shader. So create a new shader. I'm going to just double click on this and we'll call this APC Shader. And so right now it is basically displaying whatever channel we happen to have selected. You see under this base diffuse module we have current channel selected for the texture. I want to actually make this the underneath coat which in this case would be the metal. So under current channel, I'm actually going to go and select metal instead. 
And so now it's actually showing us the metal. Now we need to create a new shader module to display not only the color, but also use the mask to help us cut away part of the color. So we'll go to new shader module. And we want to choose this mask diffuse blend. So we'll choose that right there. Say OK. That's going to drop it in above our base diffuse. If you give the uh, the limited screen space here for our shader, but we should be able to see it if we scroll through. So looking at this masked diffuse blend, we have an area for texture and for the mask as well, and then for the blend amount and blend mode. We'll leave those as is. What we want to put our maps in here. So under texture, we'll choose the base color, and under mask texture, we'll choose our scratch mask. Okay, so now we're actually seeing the base color. And based on the scratch mask, it tells us how much of this we're going to see versus how much of the metal we're actually going to see. Okay, so the metal is the light gray, the base color is this green, and then the scratch mask is white at this, uh, at this uh, time. And so what we want to do is in the scratch mask, choose black, and let's just get a brush. And just for example here, let's go ahead and choose... One of these, let's actually choose the, I don't know, something like that, metal reveal. And so now what we can do is come in here and actually just make sure that you've got your scratch mask selected. And then what we can do is to come in and you can see I'm painting in this mask. Go ahead and uh, bake that in. And I'm not actually painting away any of this base color within this texture. All of that color is still there. And you can tell by just going and choosing white, painting that back through, and you can see that I can paint back that color. And so if we have any sort of more intricate surface detail in there, that would show through as well. So I'm not actually destroying anything within any particular channel. I'm actually just using a mask. And so this is going to be a really nice workflow for really creating something very flexible because then I can come in and make any changes I want to the base color, modify that color, um, whatever I want to do to it. It doesn't affect the scratch mask at all. Same thing with the metal. If I want to change the surface of the metal, do any painting on the metal, I can um, really have a nice way of isolating these and then go in and use the scratch mask to actually reveal parts of this. And a nice thing about this is I can actually reuse the scratch mask for other things too, for maybe specularity or whatever kind of surface properties that may be different wherever that is scratched. I can real easily use this mask because all that's on it is basically black and white map with, uh, with areas drawn out for those particular scratches. Okay, and that's just a matter of setting up your different channels and going into your shader and just making sure that you've got the uh, shader set up correctly with the mass diffuse uh, in here with the base color and the scratch mask. Okay, so working with layers is going to be uh, really important. We'll use this uh, not only on the scratches, but also on things like we can use it on mud if you want to have dirt or rust or any of these other things that you want to add to your model and, and, uh, and really keep a lot of the flexibility, you can use those masks. Okay, now we can also in start to incorporate tiled textures on the surface of our model. So if we have a, a for instance, some surface detail that's just a small section, but it's tileable, we can actually, in Mari, include that in our shader. So we'll take a look at that in the next lesson.